hey, hey, what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Uh, this week we are doing a follow-up to our effects video that we did years ago for the Behringer X32. Uh, in this video, I want to recap a few things in there, um, answer a few questions that have come up from that video over time, uh, and show you a way that you can maximize your number of effects buses for more things like live streaming as well. So I'm gonna try and make this video really quickly. This is not necessarily a replacement for the other video. In the other video, I do more uh, on the actual console. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be doing it from the X32 edit app, though I will be referring to the console. Um, so you may find value in watching that one as well, but I'm gonna try and put all the newest information into this video here. Um, and uh, so let's hop right into it. I'm gonna try and make this video really quickly. So it's okay if you need to rewind a few spots, that's, that's fine. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them below in our YouTube comment section. But let's hop right in. On here, I have the X32 edit app, um, and I have just made up kind of a fake scene to work with. Otherwise, everything has been completely initialized. The only other thing that I've done is if you go to the bus and matrix tab on here, um, I hit edit and I added in the MC bus because we're going to talk about that a little bit as we go here today. So real quick um, to explain why I'm doing some of the things that I'm doing. As a default, the X32 gives you buses 13, 14, 15, and 16 as effects one through four. Uh, you don't have to use four effects. As you'll see in this video, we're gonna be using three. I personally like to use a band verb, a vocal verb, and a delay. Now the problem when you use odd numbers of things in the X32 is that the X32 um, uses pairs of things when it comes to the DSP control. So what I mean by that is if we're looking at effects one and two, if I wanted to have effects one be a um, in-ear mix, for example, things that need pre-fade sends, and effects two to be an effect which needs post-fade sends, I would not be able to do that. I'd have to pick one or the other. So one thing that we're going to do today, because I like to use three effects, we're going to maximize this by utilizing our MC bus. If you're not familiar with the MC bus, the MC bus is typically used if you're gonna put your uh, subs on an auxiliary. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, I actually don't like that approach because um, it can affect things you're doing with your live stream and it's more complicated for volunteers, so on and so forth. You can watch the video and see why. But the beautiful thing is that the MC mix is a post-fade mix that is really not being utilized. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to move our band reverb send onto the MC mix, and we're gonna utilize effects three and four as our vocal effects, and we're gonna turn effects one and two into a live stream mix that you can use so you have more buses to work with. And that way we'll keep things working in pairs and we'll get all the effects that we need. So let's hop right in. If you're on the X32, this would be the fourth layer on the board, um, the bus effects layer. We're going to take effects one and we're going to change that to be, um, let's call that stream left. I'll make that red. Two will be stream right. We're going to select the uh, channel button here at the top left, or if you're on the console, you'll hit the home button next to the screen. Uh, and we're going to link those two channels. And so now we have a stereo bus for our live stream. The way I like to do live stream is we're gonna be using a post fade mix. Considering these were built for effects, they're already set for post, so we don't need to change anything else uh, in that regard right now. Um, just while you're here, make sure that on your main out that the main left right is not on. You want that turned off. Uh, and then we can move on from that. You can watch my other videos on how the live stream works. Okay, effects three, we're gonna click that and change that to be our V verb 
S, that stands for Vocal Reverb Send. FX4 will be our Delay S, Delay Send. And then over here on our MC bus, we're going to change that to be our B Verb S, Band Reverb Send. We'll make that purple like the other effects. And very important, make sure that that fader is at zero or unity. All right. Okay, so... Uh, forgive me, I got chickens around me and they're going crazy. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, next thing we're going to do is um, is go ahead and change our effects homepage so that it is listening to the right mixes. Uh, so if you're on the console next to the screen, you're going to hit effects and then go to effects home. Here on the X-Ray 2 Edit app, we're going to go up here to effects one through four. And you can see as a default, these four effects here are listening to buses 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, what we want to do is change those to the buses that we just set up. So this first one here, we're going to change that to main MC. Second one will be bus 15. Bus 16. <clears throat> And because we're not really utilizing it as a effect the same way, we're going to turn this last one into an insert. And you can use this as something, for example, maybe a uh, sans amp emulator on a bass guitar. So we'll show you how to do that. Okay, real quickly while I'm here, I'm not going to go through all my settings for these, but I typically like to start with my band reverb being the vintage reverb. My vocal reverb, I really like the uh, vintage room. The delay is going to be a stereo delay. If you have a stereo system, you want to change the factor. Uh, I like factor left to be one. Factor right, I usually set it to about two-thirds. Uh, so that way you get kind of a dotted eighth ping pong sound going on if you're in stereo. All right, and then we're going to change the stereo chorus uh, into the stereo guitar amp, which again we can use as a sans amp emulator if we want. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so next, um, let's set up our assignable section to control this. Again, this is really going to be useful if you're on a full X32 console. Um, so rather than trying to get to our return faders and control things like that, like where we're doing a lot of fader flipping, we're going to put the most important things we need in this section of four encoders and eight buttons. So to do that, we're gonna go over here to assign and edit. Actually, we'll do setup A and then assign, edit. <coughs> so setup A we see here is going to be where my effects are. So I'm gonna change that to be purple, just like the other effects knobs are. The encoders, um, we're going to set those up to be faders. And we're going to skip the third one. The reason why I'm doing that is because when you're looking from left to right, we're going to have band verb, vocal verb, and then skip. And then on the far outside of the board will be our delay. Just because the delay is the thing that you're probably going to be changing the most. So you want those buttons and knobs where you can get to them the easiest. So just real simple for while we're doing that. So our encoder one is set to a fader. And we're going to change that to be our effects return one L, one left. It can be left or right. It doesn't matter. They're both linked together. Um, we're going to do the same thing for encoder two. That will be return two left. And then for our encoder four, again, we're skipping over to the end. That will be our delay, which is effects return three left. All right. For the buttons below, we want to have what's called sends on fader. This is how we can control how much of the individual faders are going to our effect. Um, so we're going to take these first four buttons here, and we're going to change them to be jump to page. And again, I'm skipping the third one. And then it'll be, instead of channel, it'll be sends on fader. And then... MC bus for our uh, band reverb. And then the next one sends on fader. Bus 15. Oops. There we go. Sorry about that. And then skip. Sends on fader. 
bus 16. All right, then finally, the last four buttons, I want them to put the effect on the screen in case I need to change any of the settings. Um, so those actually on this editing app are defaulted where we want them. Um, so we want them to be on jump to page and then effects and then effects one, two, and three. However, we are going to change the fourth one to be an effect button. And then we want this to control the tempo of the tap delay. So delay is our third effect. So we're going to hit effects three and we're going to select time. And so now you can see this button down here is flashing. If you have it on the console, it will continue flashing, um, showing the tempo of your delay. If you're not familiar with what that means, you don't have to use delay. Um, I think it's a nice thing to accentuate your vocals, especially with, um, but it can be distracting if you're overdoing it. Um, so it's just one of those things you can watch the other video and kind of hear more of what it does. Um, but definitely if it's distracting, you don't have to use it. I just want you to show you how you can use it if you want to. On that note, the next thing we're going to do is set up our kill switches, our mute groups, so that we can quickly uh, turn these effects off if we need to. So, for example, let's say the pastor's microphone dies and they hop onto the worship leader's microphone. It's got a ton of reverb and delay on there. That'd be really distracting. So we can have a couple of buttons that will just quickly mute and unmute the effects. Um, and so we're going to do that with mute groups. So the way to do it on the X32 edit app, um, we're going to go to our effects return. So again, this is the third layer on the board or on the X32 app. It says aux effects. Let's go ahead and label these while we're here. So effects one left will be B verb L band verb right V verb for vocal verb L for left and R for right delay left delay right and then we can keep the effects where they are we'll just turn this down and mute them now you'll notice that my faders um, are also controlled by my encoders now. So again, if you're on the console, you don't have to be on the screen to adjust these levels. You can be uh, anywhere on the console, and as long as you are on set A for your assignable controls, your encoder wheels will control these levels. That makes things very, very quick and easy to get around with. Um, <clears throat> so let's also, actually while we're here, Let's go ahead and do some basic settings. I'm going to click on 1 through 32, and I'll show you. Um, I made just some generic channel strips on here. So we've got some drums with overheads, kick, snare, tom 1, tom 2, bass guitar, a couple electric guitars, an acoustic guitar, and a couple of vocals. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the assignable button uh, for sends on fader for our band reverb, which again is that top left button we have here. And you'll notice that all of our faders have gone down and turned purple. Um, this is showing us how much of each individual channel is going to our band reverb um, effect before we you know, send it back for us to hear it. So what I like to do on here, some people go a different approach. For me, this is a simpler way to go, is we're going to kind of build this around our snare and our acoustic guitar. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the snare drum and we're going to push this up to about zero. And then make sure that the, um, the send for this channel is on. So on the editing app, we have to turn the power button on on there. If you're on the X32, um, you will probably notice that the mute button is lit up. You'll need to disengage that mute button. So now the snare will be sending to the band reverb. Um, as long as that fader's up, we can turn up the encoder and we'll be able to hear the reverb come in on the snare. So again, I usually start with the snare um, and the acoustic at around Unity, and I'm kind of building everything around that snare, making sure that the snare sounds the way I want, and then I'm turning everything else up and down around that. Um, we'll do the same thing with the toms. Again, make sure that your sends are on, 
You may want a tiny bit on the overheads and the kick if you're trying to blend them in. Same thing with guitars. Whatever it is you want to have on, just make sure that you have that on button on or the mute button off uh, if you're looking at the board. And so now these things would be sending to the band verb. And again, we have our encoder wheel over here to hear the end result. If we want to do the same thing for vocals, we're going to go over here and click on the vocal send button. We're going to turn the vocal one and two to unity. Make sure that they're on going to that mix. In this case, they already are. We'll do the same thing with the delay. So I'm going to click on the send for the delay and turn up that. Now, if you're on the console to exit this mode to be able to hear and we'll see what the faders are showing for what the crowd is hearing, you would simply click that, um, that button again, or you can click on the button that is flashing sends on fader. Uh, on the X-Ray 2 Edit app, we are just going to go over here and click on main, left, right. And now our faders are again showing us what the crowd is hearing, um, not what uh, is going to our effects. Um, so back to what I was talking about earlier, um, let's create some kill switches for those effects. Uh, so we're going to use our mute groups. On the console, next to the screen, you would hit mute assign. You'd hold down, in this case, um, mute group four, and then you'd select what channels you want to be affected by it. The way we're going to do it on the X32 Edit app is we're going to go to our effects uh, returns, so aux effects, select band verb left. We're going to go up to our channel button up here, or you can click on the home button uh, if you are doing this from the board. And under mute groups, we're going to select mute group four will affect both band verb left and right. You can see because they're linked, they have both lit up on mute group four. For our vocal verb, we're going to do mute group five, and our delay will be mute group six. And so those are going to be really accessible for you now. If pastor walks up to use the, um, the singer's microphone, you can just hit mute group five and six, and you've killed the vocal effects really quickly. Uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of DCAs um, to give us some quick control to turn the vocal effects up and down during a song. So we'll go over to one of our DCA pages here. And you can see that as a default, I have uh, DCA 6 is going to be for my vocal reverb and DCA 7 will be for my delay. The way I like to do it is for the vocal reverb, because the band is going to have that in their ears as well, we're going to have this effect, the effects return, um, and that will only affect what the crowd is hearing, whereas the delay will affect the effects send, um, which will give us more of a more natural ramping effect sound, kind of like what electric guitarists do with their pedal board setup. So to do that, we're going to go back to our effects return page. We're going to select the vocal verb left or right, and we're going to go to DCA groups, and we're going to select DCA group six. If you're on the console, you can hold down the select button for DCA group six and then hit the select button for the vocal reverb. Um, if we want to do the same thing with delay, we could do that. We go to delay, select that, and then do DC group seven. But again, for today's example, what I'm going to do is not do that. Instead, we're going to go to our bus page, select the delay S, delay send, and select that one for group, uh, DCA group seven. Okay, and so now you should have everything working. Um, now, the reason why I say should is because in today's example, I'm doing this based off of an initialized scene. And so I know that all the settings from the beginning are what I'm building upon are correct. Um, now, a lot of people have emailed me after my original video saying, oh, it's not working for me. I tried everything. Well, usually they missed a step in there somewhere or they had some sort of weird stuff going on from their previous scene for whatever reason. Um, so I've got five steps on here from top to bottom of things you can check to make sure why your effects may not be working. So let's go through. Let's pretend that we're having a problem getting the effects on vocal one. If you look at this list up here on the top right, first off, we need to make sure that the channel is up and unmuted. So I've got channel one, the volume is up, 
The mute is disengaged. Great. Okay, next, channel send is up and unmuted. So there are two ways you can do this. I can look at the sends page, and I can look over. I'm going to close this down here, and you can see vocal verb. The sends are up. They are turned on. Another way I can do that is I can go to um, the sends on fader button for my vocal reverb send. You see now it is showing me those levels um, going to that effect. And you can see that they are indeed vocal one and vocal two are up and they are turned on. Okay, so that's great. Again, to leave that mode, we're going to click on our main left right button or deselect your sends on fader. Next is make sure that your bus master is up and unmuted. So again, on the board, that would be the fourth layer for your faders. Uh, on the app, um, we're gonna go to bus matrix page, and then we're gonna make sure that our V verb send and our delay are both up and the mute is not engaged. Next, if that's all working so far, you're gonna go to your effects return page, which is the third layer on the board, or aux effects on the app. And we're gonna make sure that in this case, our V verb left and right, delay left and right, again, are up. They are not muted. Uh, and then we didn't talk about this earlier, but we need to make sure that they're also routed to the main left, right. Again, as a default, they should be, but you never know. So again, to check that on the board, you're gonna click the home button next to the screen or on the app, we're gonna click on the channel button under main out, you need to make sure that the left right button is engaged so that you can hear this effect coming out of your main speakers. All right, finally, uh, under DCAs, again, we need to make sure that our vocal verb and delay are up and unmuted. In this example, I did not turn those up, so that would be why you wouldn't hear any sound. So if I put this at unity for both of these, we should be hearing sound now. Uh, we also need to make sure that our mute groups are disengaged. So if five, six, or four are um, muted, then you will see those will also affect uh, your effects. So make sure that those are not muted. So if you can get all those seven things set correctly, then you should be good to go and you should be having your effects. Uh, one final thing, and I got another video that talks about this a little bit deeper, um, to make sure that your effects are going to your live stream. Very, very similar. Uh, we're going to go to our effects return page. We're going to go, in this case, to bus 13 and 14 are the live stream that we made. And then just make sure that you turn up the levels to wherever you have set. Again, you can watch my video for more information on this so that your um, band verb, vocal verb, and delay are also being sent to your um, live stream mix as well. And that's it. I hope that's helpful for you guys. Again, uh, there'll be a link at the end of the video for my older video on this if you want to see more of this done on the actual console and you'll hear some more audio examples. I hope that's helpful for you guys. If you have any further questions, please feel free to leave them below and uh, I'm happy to make another follow-up ver uh, video if necessary. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.